Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Look here, in the penitentiary, y'all, you need to learn to watch your mouth. Period, point blank. Watch your mouth. Because what comes out your mouth can sometimes lead to a foot being put in your you-know-where. You know what I'm talking about, right? So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Now, another point on this story that I'm about to tell you. If you represent the opposition, right, you got a vice lord over here, a gangster over here, a blood over here, a crip over here, whatever the case may be. Let's say you cool with the person on the other side of this thing, right? You might even know them from the streets, but that don't give you license, man, when you representing something on the other side to jump into business that they have going on, even if it's something that they cause themselves and you just want to look out for them, right? Because it can cost you in the end. And that's what this story is about, right? I'm going to tell you when the gangster got in vice lord business and, and folks and them had to put hands on him, right? So look here, y'all. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, check it out, y'all. Listen to me. Listen to me now. I want y'all to hear this story real good. I want you to feel this story too, right? Look here. One day, man, in the kitchen, right, in the child hall. Now, in the child hall, you got everybody. That's where they work, right? And in this particular child hall, you know, you got this assembly line where, you know, the food will come down the line. You got the trays coming down the line, and you got guys on both sides of the line, and they got a different assignment, right? Everybody's got to put in this tray, you put this. In that tray, you put that. You know, you might have meat. You might have bread. You might have dessert. You might have salad. You, whatever you have, you might have the condiments. And you put that on the tray when the tray passes by you, right? So anyway, you got everybody in there. You got bloods, vice lords, gangsters, peons, every nation, everybody. Plus, you got, you know, a free world person that's really running the line, right? So anyway, everybody's talking and kicking it. And usually, for the most part, just having fun. You know what I'm saying? Trying to let the time pass while they're working, right? So anyway, we got a situation one day where Vice Lord on the line, he cracking jokes. You know, he's a funny guy, always telling jokes. Everybody laughing at his jokes because he's a funny guy. He could probably get out and be a comedian, truth be told, right? So anyway, he's cracking these jokes, right? And the main dude that he's gunning at, right, is a peon. Dude don't represent nothing. You know what I'm saying? But everybody like him. Everybody knows him. You know what I'm saying? You know, he really ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? So here's the thing. He running his mouth one day. The Vice Lord cracking jokes. Saying this and saying that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying this and saying that about this young dude. And the young dude popped back at him and said, man, I don't even know why you running your mouth, man. Everybody around here talking about you snitching. So look here, y'all. In the penitentiary, there's one thing you don't joke about. It's snitching. Listen to me. When I tell you that the whole child hall area, where the kitchen, where they prepare these trays, that whole area all of a sudden went silent. You could hear a pin drop. Now everybody looked at the vice lord dude. Everybody looked back at the other dude, the peon. Now you got gangsters, bloods, crip, every nation. And everybody's looking to see what you're going to do. Even though but it's understood that everybody was joking and kicking and all this and that. But he crossed the line. The peon crossed the line and called and a person that's affiliated a rat. A snitch. Now, what's going to happen? That's what everybody's wondering. Everybody's watching. What is he going to do? So he told the peon, he said, look, man, watch your mouth, man. Watch your mouth. He said, man, watch my mouth. Now, the peon still think they're joking. You understand? He's not reading the room. You got to learn to read the room when you're in the penitentiary. When everything goes quiet, shut up. Get your back against the wall. Something is about to happen. Now, if you happen to be the one in it, look here. Look left, look right, back up. Don't make no sudden moves. Back up. You understand? This dude did not read the room. So look, the child hall, the, the line is still moving, right? The food, the trays and stuff still coming out of the line. So you still got to be putting your stuff where you're supposed to be putting your stuff, right? But look here. Vice Lord walk off the line, comes around to the side where the peon is, and he telling, he said, man, you need to straighten that up, man. 
Don't be letting people think of people, having people thinking that I'm around here red. I'm not on that. You feel what I'm saying? Now, the peon is still not reading the room because the vice lord just gave him an out. He gave him an out. All the peon had to say is, man, my bad, man. I thought we were just joking, man. I ain't mean that. Blase, blase. He looked right at the vice lord, man, and he still has a smile on his face like it's a joking matter. And said, man, I'm just telling you what I heard. I'm just telling you what, I'm, what I heard. Look here. Before you could blink your eye, the vice lord hit him with a two-piece and knocked him backwards. I'm talking about knocked him back. You know, when you fighting, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all. some of y'all out there been into a, in fights in your life. You know what I'm saying? I know these days, don't nobody want to fight. Everybody want a gun play. But anyway, I know you've been in a fight. And if you ain't fake like you have and follow me at this story here, right? Look here. The vice lord hit him with a two-piece. Uh, uh. This dude, he didn't just bounce back, absorb the lick, and get his hands up and get ready. You know what I'm saying? He stumbled back. Stumbled back, and then when he's stumbling back, he throw his hands up and he's looking through his arms with fear on his face like a real movie. Like, what's going on? What did I do? He fall back to Vice Lord Russia. He's on top of him. Now, instead of the Vice Lord just popping him and knocking him on down to the ground, look here. This young brother reached down and grabbed him and snatched him to him and said, come here. Pulled him up to him and said, watch your mouth when you're talking about Vice Lord, right? So, dudes, I mean... I thought we were playing. He said, man, I don't play like that. And he hit him again with another two-piece. Knocked him down. He fall on his back. Now the dude's starting to understand. Look, wait a minute. This ain't a game. <laughs> Took him four licks to the dome to figure out this, this ain't a game, right? So he throw a couple of licks while he falling backwards. He laying one up. Hit the vice floor pretty good. But dude is already on it. He already on. So now they hustling and tussling. They ra wrapped up and they rolling around on the ground, right? Now here, look, check this out. The police is standing back. Stop. 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 Y'all quit that. Hit the button. And when I say hit the button, that's the button is like they got on the radios, right? They got a panic button. They can hit that button. And all the police on the compound will be alerted. It's a problem in such and such area, right? And then they run to the area, right? The police ain't said nothing but yell, yelling at them, stop, stop. Then panicked herself. You feel? So here's the thing. <laughs> the fight is going on. Now the vice lords stand up. The peons stand up. They ain't wrestling no more. So instead of swinging at the peon, the vice lord just rush him and push him into the wall. When the when the peon bounce up off the wall, I'm thinking he gonna come back and whip the thing right and hit him with a two piece. He come up off the wall. He got his hands up over his face. The vice lord hit him, but his arms is up and hands are blocking the punches. He hit the dude on his arm so hard, knocked him down. Now the vice lord get on top of him. He's straddling. Now he finna show out. He hitting it with everything he got. Dude is laying down on the ground. Now one of the one of the onlookers is looking and said, Man, what's wrong with you? You're tired. You always got a jokester in the crowd, even though it's a fight, right? He looked down up at the peon on the ground. He said, What's wrong with you? You're tired? Look here, check this out. This is what the peon did. I'm telling you now, this is really what happened. I'm not joking about this, right? The peon looked out from the side of his hands. Why he getting beat up by this vice? He said, No, I ain't tired. And then he put his hands back over his face to cover up, right? And then the peon, the onlooker said, Well, you better do something. <laughs> Couldn't do nothing. He balled all the way up. He he didn't just cover up his face. He got in the fetal position. He got into the fetal position trying to make sure he don't get beat up. He trying to hold on to the police, get that to save. Now, look here. If the vice lord wanted to, he could have done him in, but he didn't. Now, look here. Let me, tell, let me get to the part of the story that's really going to get funny and twisted, right? Now, you know, this peon, <laughs> this peon, is on the ground, getting beat by the vice lord. Now, this vice lord, he cool with one of the folks. You feel what I'm saying? And one of the folks is trying to, hey, 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 VL, hey, VL, look here, man, you need to stop that, man. The, the police on the way. The police on the way. Now, look here, check this out. You got some of the guys, they stand back, they looking. When he go over and he try to break it up, they look at each other. Some of the folks, they look at each other and say, wait a minute. What bro doing? It ain't GDB. One of the old heads in, 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 in the building, he said, no, nah, just hold up. Hold up. Let it play out. So they stand back and look, about four of them over in the corner. You can see them. They, they watching everything, right? See, when they do like that, they getting ready in their mind. They getting the story in their mind when they write him up. They going to write down every little detail that he did, right? So they watching all for them. They own it. 
I'm talking about they own it, man. They watching real hard. So he pulled the vice lord off, right? And they went to the restroom, right? And he in there with the vice lord. The vice lord in there washing his hands out, putting cold water on his hands so his hands can go down real quick. Because what they do when they come in after a fight, sometime after a fight, and then they, you know, they try to say, let me see your hands. Show your hands and all this, and then your hands not swollen. You know, you got some kind of an alibi, but he ain't going to have no alibi in this because he did it in front of everybody. But the point is, he went out and wiped what little blood he had on him out and all that old kind of stuff. It was in vain, but he did it anyway. But the point is that this gangster, this folk, is helping the vice loop. Now, that's what we're getting to, y'all. Now, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Why is the folks helping the vice lord? What's really going on? Oh, they know each other. So? They cool with each other from the town. So? They don't have to size of this thing. That's what's relevant. That's what's relevant, y'all. So, look here. Police get up there. Get on the wall. Everybody get on the wall. They take the, the peon out. They take the vice lord out. They put him in the hole. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. Get back down to the unit. Folks, them, they huddled up. They talking. I go to the microwave. I put me some in the microwave. I'm heating my stuff up in the microwave. I'm leaning on the wall. Now, don't get me twisted, man. I ain't being nose or nothing like that. But when I see stuff going down, I know what's going down, right? Look, I'm trying to tell me a story on, on my podcast. So I'm standing there. I was standing there, right, with my food in the microwave. Look, they look over. I said, what's up, Joe T? I said, what's up? What y'all got going on? You good? You good? You good? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it is, man. Dealing with the brother, man. The brother tripping out up in the kitchen. I said, yeah, man. I seen that, man. They're like, yeah, yeah. What'd you see? I said, man, I ain't going to get in there, man. You know I ain't a part of the business no more, man. I ain't finna get all up in there, man. They all looked at me and started laughing, right? I said, what you down here for anyway, Joe T? I said, man, I'm heating up my food. I said, man, quit playing, man. Trying to be nose. I said, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. You know, what y'all finna do to him? Oh, they give me all the bid. I mean, we finna write him up and beat him. Finna write him up and beat him. I said, for real, for what? I'm playing stupid now. Because, you know, I've been in the bid for years, so I'm retired, but I still know what's going on. So, But I'm playing them, you know what I'm saying? I ain't playing them, playing them, trying to get over. I'm just acting like I don't, I don't, I don't forget what goes on and how this thing happens. I said, oh, you know what it is, man. You know what it is. He ain't got no bid in heaven to fight. Lord, we didn't care if the right Lord got beat up, went to the hole or whatever. Folks ain't had nothing to do with that. That they be in there. That they be. I said, yeah, I feel you on that, man. But uh, he just trying to hip him, man. Stay out of trouble, man. Keep it keep it calm and cool for everybody in the area. Care nothing about that. At that point, I knew then they didn't like, bro. They just wanted to beat him up. That's all this was about. And they and he gave them the rope to do it. So look here. I grab my food out the microwave. I go on back to the room. I'm eating my food, right? <laughs> I see him come through the door. You know what I mean? They serve him with the write-up. Here you go, folk. He read it. He look. He said, man, this is some bull. Whoop the woo, whoop the woo. This is some bull, man. I ain't done nothing. You know what I'm saying? He ain't seeing it the way the org sees it. He don't see that as getting in the business of the opposition. He saw that as trying to help a friend. And that's another thing about the life. The insidious side of it is that you can't even help a friend, man. You can't help a friend. And if you do, you do it at risk. Period, point blank. So, of course, y'all know what happened. The write-up goes through. He gets found guilty. They give him six minutes, no cover-up, right? Beat him. Now he mad. He mad. He won't out. He don't want to be a part of nothing like this no more where you can't even help a friend. Because he knew this cat from the town. He knew this cat from the town. But he's not understanding. He's not looking at the big picture. So he running his mouth to the vice lord brother. Telling the vice lord brother what they did to him. Because everybody's hearing about it. And he tell the vice lord brother what they did, right? So the vice lord brother, he get upset too, right? He's like, man, you ain't do nothing but try to help me, man. So he's saying something to his his brothers, right? And when he say something to his brother, guess what his brother tell him? Shoot, they right. He wasn't supposed to get in there. And then they ask him, what you want us to do about him getting beat on? Now, reality starts to set in on him. He said, man, no, nah, I'm just saying, man, you know, I think it's messed up. That, you know, he was trying to help me, you know what I'm saying? And then they won't beat him up. And the vice lord brothers is in charge. said, what's that got to do with us? So he said, see, he, this, this brother, he learned to read the room real fast. Because when the vice lord told him, what's that got to do with us? He knew right then he better not say another word. Better not say another word. So now him and, uh, him and, and the gangster, they walking around, both of them looking silly. Folks, he got his lips stuck out. You know what I'm saying? And 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 the, and the vice lord dude, 
he mad because his brothers didn't take the bait. You know what I'm saying? As if he was going to try to walk up on, on folks and them and do something to them for discipline and their own, right? But the point is of this story is this, y'all. That gang lifestyle, ain't no friends on the other side. They might say it is. And you can be cool with people on the other side until something goes wrong. And that's the problem about that. One of the problems. One of many. You can be cool with somebody on the other side until something goes wrong and you cross that line. If you cross that blue line, getting into the business of somebody on that red side, or whatever color they may be representing, be prepared to be dealt with if your brothers decide they want to deal with you. Because that's just what it is. There are no friends in that lifestyle. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, y'all. I'm telling you what's real. I know you don't want to hear it, though. Y'all, and let me tell you what happened to the peon <laughs> before I go. The peon, he ends up going to the hall. They let him out. He's learned his lesson. He went up to the he went up to uh, the vice lord and told the vice lord, said, man, I didn't mean it like that, man. I was just playing. Now, him and the vice lord, they cool again. Back to joking. Back to joking. And here, sometimes you got to learn to read the room, right? But everything is everything. You know what I'm saying? This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.